Um, you know, in the White House, there were low points, the president getting COVID-19, um, the murder of George Floyd and, and kind of the, the, the really tense moment in our nation um, after that. You know, there were really, really low points and hard points and hard issues to, to work through. But having my faith and my Jesus calling and having God speak to me through scripture and through prayer, uh, it, it helped you get through those really difficult times in our moments in our nation's history and in my own personal life. So I've got to ask you, because so many of us are, are so inspired uh, watching you on television and seeing the, the convictions and the character with which you carry yourself. Uh, did you always have an interest in politics and in the media, or was there a time when, when you felt this real calling to move into those places? So it's a great question. I had this like natural love for politics from a very young age. It may sound a little peculiar, but I was this like eight-year-old on the playground who was doing cheers for Bob Dole during the 1996 <laughs> election. I don't know. I don't know what it was, but my like, my heart just drew me to politics. And I, I look, I don't come from a political family, Kirk. Like, yes, they have viewpoints. They are conservative. They talk about politics at the dinner table. But really for me, it was riding my dad's truck, hearing this guy named Rush Limbaugh um, and just being really inspired and motivated. So for whatever reason, God put politics on my heart from a very, very young age. Well, it's one of those subjects that just affects everything. It's really how we live. It's the quality of life. It's how we treat other people. And uh, faith is so closely connected with politics because that's how we live out our faith and the way that we treat other people. So that, that makes sense. And it seems like you have really been on the fast track. I mean, you started and you were an intern in the White House and then you're the press secretary of the White House. And then you're a production assistant and now a national television host. Um, that's really amazing. Uh, tell us about your journey to the White House. Yeah, you know, it is your you hit the nail on the head there. I mean, from intern to press secretary and just over 10 years. I mean, it shocked me that that was the plan that God had for my life because I was just this young kid in the back corner um, of the briefing room watching Dana Perino do a briefing. I was in college at the time. And then I go to intern at Fox News and then um, ultimately, you know, become a host at Fox News. And it's funny, you know, along the path, you know, this 10 year journey to the podium, you know, there were doors that were shut. Um, and I used to think, why, God, I know I'm qualified for this. I know I can do this. But, you know, every door that was shut um, was opening another little door that had this, you know, kind of unlikely path to the podium from being on a CNN set, which is where I was in 2016, to the RNC, to the Trump campaign, and then ultimate, ultimately getting the call from President Trump to come be his press secretary. But, you know, it was not an easy path. It's not a spot I glided into. It's a spot where, you know, there were doors slammed in my face, but they were slammed for a reason. And I think um, when you achieve God's purpose that he has for your life, a lot of times you can look back and like a constellation of stars, you just say, oh, that's why that was shut. Oh, that's why that yeah. door was open. Okay, now I understand. Yeah, that, that must have been an amazing, surreal moment. Um, oh yeah, um, Kaylee, the president's on the phone. He'd like to talk with you. Uh, <laughs> and, it, was, it was surreal. And I look back on, on my life, and I think many of us can say this, that we had plans for our life, and yet God opens different doors that we didn't even know were there and closes doors that we really wish were opened. And, and when I think of the path that I wanted to take, I wanted to be a doctor like uh, Ben Carson and be a surgeon, and, and yet God had a totally different plan. And if that hadn't happened, I never would have met my wife. We wouldn't have had our six kids. And I wouldn't be talking with, with you right now on this program. Um, I know that you had a plan when you were at Harvard Law School to study law. And yet here you are in politics, here you are in media, you're on a national show. Um, how, how did that happen? I mean, how did you go from law into politics? Did you switch and change or was that sort of a natural progression? It was kind of a natural progression. Um, it's not the normal path that someone would take, but you know, after college at Georgetown, um, I went right in and was a producer for Mike Huckabee. He had a show um, at Fox at the time, and for three years, you know, I got to be there as one of his producers and learn from him and kind of get to know people at Fox. And you know, I ultimately left to get a law degree. It's something I wanted to do to further my career, but I wanted to be in media and politics, so I went to law school with that as an end goal. Um, but again, you know, we talk about unlikely things happening, and it was literally during law school. I had actually 
just met my husband who I, I met on Twitter, which is actually pretty funny. Um, and you know, we were on a date and we're baking a pizza in the oven and I get a call from CNN. This is like during 2015, during the, uh, primaries, you know, president Trump was there, Dr. Ben Carson, many others. And they asked me if I wanted to come in and, uh, give my opinion on what was going on. I said, sure. I had done like one or two other appearances on CNN. And this was after I had emailed more than a hundred producers, my, my clips. Um, so I, I get the call. I go, Go in. It became more regular. I was still in law school, but on the side, um, was doing these media appearances on CNN before ultimately getting hired. So, you know, it's kind of like you know, you're on one path, law, and I, I knew I wanted to be a media and politics, but I didn't know how. And then you get the one call out of the blue after you've sent out, you know, a hundred plus emails. A production assistant, an associate producer with Huckabee, and now you have your own show. How excited are you about this opportunity? I mean, is this is this cool? Is this a cool job? Do you love this? Oh, I love it. I mean, what a look being behind the podium and taking barbs from like Jim Acosta and others is challenging. Um, you know, I always tried to have grace under fire because I was certainly under fire at the podium. But you, you know, now my life, I, I get to be with my daughter. I go in, I'm with the two of the most amazing women I've ever met, Harris Faulkner and Emily Campagno. And we just get to, in a talk show format from 12 to 1 um, on Outnumber, just talk about the issues of the day. And, and we genuinely like each other. It's not a show like The View where people are like arguing left and right. It's a show where we just really like love the issues, love each other. And uh, it's it's so fun. Every time I walk onto that set, I'm like, is this real? Kaylee, people love listening to you and they so respect you. How does the role of your faith in the Lord um, guide you both in your personal life and especially in your in your political and uh, your media life? It's instrumental. I mean, I couldn't get through a day or an hour without it. You know, for me, I, I think knowing, um, you know, I grew up in the pews of my Southern Baptist church and I went to an all girls Catholic school and faith was just kind of woven within me um, by my parents. And, you know, when I went off to Washington, D.C., to Georgetown, to Oxford, you know, over in the United Kingdom, then to Cambridge, and then to New York City, I mean, it's something that has always been, no matter what happens in my life, like a shut door, a low point, um, before I met my husband, a bad breakup, it was always this thing that kind of was my anchor. And it still is to this day, because, um, you know, in the White House, there were low points, the president getting COVID-19, um, the murder of George Floyd, and, and kind of the 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 really tense moment in our nation um, after that, you know, there were really, really low points and hard points and hard issues to, to work through. But having my faith and my Jesus calling and having God speak to me through scripture and through prayer, uh, it, it helped you get through those really difficult times in our moments in our nation's history and in my own personal life. And you've talked about how your parents stressed the importance of having a worldview. And I know that's the, the lens through which you saw the death of George Floyd and you saw all of these important events happening. Can you just talk a little bit about that? What is actually a, a worldview and why is it so important for us to have one? Yeah, my dad always used to say growing up, like, everyone has a worldview. And I was like, what's this worldview thing? Like, he keeps talking about. Um, and it really is the lens through which you see the world. And I, it crystallized for me, especially when I went overseas to Oxford. You know, I was in a very liberal institution. I, I enjoyed my time there. I grew there. I credit, you know, being able to uh, argue in a way that is um, like intellectual and and makes sense to my time at Oxford because I really got to dig into um, kind of the art of of argumentation. Um, but, you know, as I went there, I was surrounded by people with very different worldviews, very different viewpoints. Um, and, you know, for me, knowing that my viewpoint always funneled through the viewpoint of Jesus Christ, um, it, it really helped me um, to to keep my principles, to stay firm. I know a lot of parents worry about their kids going off to college, but if you've put them in the church um, and, and put within them the worldview that I had and that I grew up with, you don't need to worry when they go off to college. Of course, keep an eye on them and check on them, but um, it really helps to keep you centered grounded. Hi, I'm Kirk Cameron, and thanks for watching the Kirk Cameron on TVN YouTube channel. We hope you enjoyed the video. A couple of things. Please make sure that you hit the subscribe button and tap the bell icon so that you're notified every time a new video is posted. And be sure to share your takeaway in the comments and invite a friend to join the conversation.